Welcome to this episode of John's Journal. And before we jump in and go a little bit further with Nicholas Cresswell, I wanted to go back for a minute and touch on that idea of the starting of a journal and why we're doing it, why the individual uh, author would do that. Some authors tell us about why they're doing it. Other authors, maybe they did, but it gets lost or there's no reason for them to tell us because they don't expect anybody else to ever read it. So Matthew, uh, Diary of Matthew Patton is like that. It's his day book, um, just kind of has his business dealings. So he's putting those down for himself. Martha Ballard's diary is very similar. She's just recording things for herself. Um, but this is a good example of someone who digs in and tells us about that. Uh, the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. If you've seen the, uh, the whole, we read through the entire uh, basically the entire memoir uh, in live stream form on the channel. So if you haven't seen that, it's a good series. So here's Benjamin Franklin. I sit down to write them for you. In other words, anecdotes of his growing up, um, to which I have besides some other inducements. Having emerged from poverty and obscurity into which I was born and bred to a state of affluence and some degree of reputation in the world, and having gone so far through life with considerable share of felicity, the conducting means I made use of, uh, which, which with the blessing of God so well succeeded, my posterity may like to know, as they may find some of them... Um, suitable in their situations, some of these uh, situations, suitable for their own situations and therefore fit to be imitated. So he's talking about um, the things he did when he was young and hey, you, sh you should do them too. So um, Nicholas Cresswell, uh, he banters about his uh, England right before he leaves. And let me read to you this almost the day of leaving Fate, be it what it will, if I am fortunate, uh, fortunate in his mm, looking into America and finding something useful, I make no doubt, but my friends will say that I have, I have acted prudently and wisely to persevere. If I am unsuccessful, not only my friends, but every rattle skull will condemn me put on a wise countenance and say they knew my plan would never answer, that I was too well at home, uh, of a restless and rambling disposition, and possibly in the height of their profound penetration will tax me with extravagance and dissipation without making the least allowance for the common vicissitudes of life. To avoid these imputations, it is just necessary to lay down short rules to govern and direct my proceedings. First, to act honestly and pay my debts as far as I am able, as an effectual means of procuring credit when I may want it. And then he makes a little uh, memorandum here, never to contract any debts that I can possibly avoid. Secondly, not to be over hasty in making any purchase or engaging with anyone for any length of time till I have considered the temper and disposition of the people, the climate, the trade, the commerce, the fertility of the soil, with the nature, quality, and quantity of the produce, their form of government, and colonial or provincial polity. And thirdly, if I like the country to return as soon as possible, as I have made what observations I think necessary, and endeavor to go out for on a better footing and live as frugally as I can with decency, these general rules observed may be of great use to me. I spent the evening with Mr. James Logston at the Fleece. At the Fleece, yes. <clears throat> so he was staying um, close to Liverpool, Pool, waiting for his ship to get ready to leave. And then uh, that was written on April, I think, the 6th. And uh, Saturday, April 9th, he is on board the ship Molly and he's headed for America. So he, uh, just before he gets on board that ship, he sort of says like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make these rules for myself. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't keep them perfectly, <laughs> which I think is, is, um, you know, typical. All these 
all these memoirs are, uh, they tell the, the good story and the bad story. And I think that's really important for the author to do that. Um, Benjamin Franklin even talks about the, the times when he made mistakes. And um, the life and travels of uh, John Robert Shaw, which is one of the, the books what we've done very recently, uh, he was known as the well digger. And in the beginning of his, which maybe I'll read tomorrow, uh, he he talks about maybe that he shouldn't write down these things because there are lots and lots of mistakes. And uh, he doesn't want people to emulate his mistakes. He wants people to learn from his mistakes. But um, he writes them all down anyway. Um, and he does at times seem to lead a rather dissipated life. Uh, many times he talks about... Oh, he works for a few months and then he's, it's like, it's time for a ramble or it's time for, you know, it's time for a, it's time to go, to go crazy. So he'll go into town and, you know, he'll blow all his money and have a good time for a, a week or two. And then, you know, he's back at it. Um, that's, that's pretty common uh, for a time period for a lot of people. So um, a a memoir like that, I think, is really important for understanding um, what a certain segment of society is expecting out of life. And I think we still have that. Um, we still have that true, you know, in today's world. There's a lot of people who are, you know, constantly thinking about the future, and then other people that are you know what, the future will bring what it brings. Um, when, I have, when I have money to spend, I'm going to spend it. I'm going to have a good time. Um, I think if we, if we looked at the lives of sailors, we would see that a lot. They would they'd be on board ship for you know, maybe a month or two or more at a time. And as soon as they'd get off board ship, they'd blow all their money instantly. Um, because they knew, yeah, you know, a couple of weeks I'll be back on board ship and I'll be, I'll, I'll be another three months without, you know, it'll be three more, more, three more months of hard work and no play, no fun. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this um, little journal read this morning. Uh, we'll dig in, maybe read a, a little bit of the uh, sea travel part in Nicholas Cresswell next and uh, see how he fares on board ship. There are some pretty gruesome uh, stories about uh, trips, you know, sea, seaborne trips to from Europe to North America. Some of them are just easy, you know, they're there and seems like three or four weeks and no problem whatsoever. And other trips that took six months and they felt like they would never never get here. <laughs> so thanks for your amazing support. Thank you, you for being part of Townsend's Plus. It's, uh, it's always a joy to dig into these things and, and re relate them. So thank you for your uh, kind support. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.